uh, and Kyle for inviting me to come speak today. I, I do appreciate it. This is the fourth time I've given this speech. I was very lucky to speak at the GSA at the high school, and I spoke in Plain at a PFLAG meeting, and I spoke at a Pioneers meeting in uh, Richland Center. And then this Sunday, uh, I'm really thrilled to be able to go to outreach in Madison. They have a new youth group, which means uh, students from, or young people rather, from 18 to 24. In Wisconsin, I didn't know this, but Wisconsin youth are just defined as 24 and under. So there's a youth group now, and uh, someone from Barrapu, Ryan Petty, helped start this group. I ran into Ryan at an outreach dinner last, last year, and I was surprised to see him. So we're everywhere, you know? And so Sunday, I'm going to go down and speak to them. So I'm really thrilled about that. Um, as uh, Kyle said, my presentation is, is entitled After Stonewall, A Lifetime of Gay Activism. Um, so that makes me an old gay guy. But because that's because last June was the 40th anniversary of the confrontation at the Stonewall Bar in New York City that was the catalyst for the modern gay movement. Now, I'm most of you, how many of you know about Stonewall? Most of you? Okay. It's, 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 a, it's kind of a seminal moment. Uh, the, the gay rights movement really started before Stonewall. The gay rights movement really uh, officially, in some official ways, started in Germany in the 30s, uh, before the uh, rise of Hitler and Nazism. But uh, it was squelched, and then it came back, and then, you know, we had Stonewall. Uh, I would like to point out that and acknowledge that today is the day of silence, so it's kind of interesting I'm here speaking in, on the day of silence. However, uh, there's kind of a, there's a, I, I printed this up off today, day of silence, April 16, 2010. On the national day of silence, hundreds of thousands of students nationwide take a vow of silence to bring attention to anti-LGBT name calling bullying and harassment in their schools. So uh, it's a very important uh, issue. Uh, the GSAs are uh, working on, on that. And uh, there are some other people who also believe that uh, it's important to speak out on the day of silence uh, and not be silent. That it's, it's, so it's kind of a double, double thing. Uh, you'll notice that there's a, a teacher here uh, with the, the pink triangle, which a lot of you know what that means from the World War II, the uh, gay, uh, uh, gay men who were in concentration camps, they somehow didn't do this to women. Uh, they just, I guess they just figured they weren't, they weren't uh, that way. Uh, so gay men wore this pink triangle, and uh, this saying, silence equals death, was very famous in the 80s when AIDS was really, really taking its toll. And a lot of gay people became very political and very activist during that time. Uh, and um, so that, that became like the slogan, the slogan for the 80s, silence equals death. Today, I think it's very relevant still because if you're silent and you don't say anything and you hear someone harassing someone or you see something go on or you know something isn't right in your community, Christina, has spoken out. I've spoken out uh, in the paper. I've spoken out when I can in public. So I'm glad to be here today to talk to you about some of this. Um, before we go back in time, I wanted to mention a few incidents that happened here in Baraboo. Oh, and I have a piano student who just became an activist. Katie Philobaum, she wrote a letter to the newspaper. Don't blame the teens is the headline about the stealing of Ruth Dawson's. Uh, political science and, and Katie really uh, it's, it's an excellent letter and uh, she became an activist when she wrote that letter. It was great. Um, I had a group of 10 year old boys in my neighborhood who would sit across the stoop while I mowed my grass. This was in I moved here in 92 so you know it's a couple years after I moved here I'm out mowing and I hear the word faggot and I'll tell you any gay person when that word is whispered even, you know that it has, it has been said. So I thought, oh, gee, my heart pounded, uh, blah, blah, blah. To make a long story short, I got some information. I started journaling 
when this was happening and I found out some of the boys' names and I went to the juvenile officer here in Baraboo and he said, oh, do you have some names? I said, yes. He said, oh, he made some phone calls. It stopped. It just stopped because they realized that I was not going to tolerate that kind of behavior and that there was somebody here who was going to stop them from doing that. Uh, we had a and still have a very religiously fervent pastor of a Bible church here who tried to pass himself off as an expert on gay people in the local newspaper's mailbag section by saying gays were dangerous because we spread AIDS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He used the word dangerous about five times. I found that really offensive, more offensive than faggot. Faggot I can deal with. Dangerous, I can't deal with it at all especially since I'm a teacher, I teach piano. I have students who are six years old to 60. I'm not dangerous, but he thought it was important to put that in the paper. So, you know, even in here in little old Baraboo, we have people who are bigots, we have people who write stuff, we have people who say stuff, and those are the people that we need to speak out uh, against. 